you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so up until now, you've seen faculty being very nice to each other. Yeah, we're all respecting each other's uh, opinions. This is the time to now put the gloves on and make it a proper fight. Okay, so Balwinder is shivering, I can see that. He's blaming air conditioner, but actually it's him. So what we're going to do is have a little bit of a debate about acute Achilles tendon rupture. And we're going to give you a case scenario to start with. So we've got you as the person who ruptures their tendon, acute Achilles tendon rupture, complete rupture. How many of you would want surgery for, for your acute Achilles tendon? God, Balwinda, put your hand down. Um, <laughs> so I've got a very difficult task to do because I've been given non-operative treatment um, uh, to debate and defend. So I've got a very difficult task to do. So we'll try and go through it and see whether we can make some sense out of it. Okay, so that's the layout and we'll have a couple of cases at the end. That's me, right? We know Achilles tendon. It has a problem in the last six sort of centimeters that we've got a zone of relative avascularity. We know it spans three joints. We know the forces going through are massive. Okay, we know as you grow older, even as an athlete, you have chance of breaking it. Okay, and the incidence of breaking it is increasing. Okay, so two peaks of uh, people we see, the uh, 30 to 50 or after 50. Lots of causes of it, mainly either degenerative in the older people or younger people, there are lots of theories. Ultrasound is a good technique to see the tendon gap in, in a dynamic fashion. MRI for partial tears is a good one. Okay, this is the crux of the matter. Treatment options. Fix, not fix. If you fix it, how are you going to fix it? If you're, not, if you're not fixing it, how are you going to immobilize? That's the debate. And what are we debating about? We're de debating about Achilles tendon, which is acutely ruptured. Not the myotendinous ones, because they shouldn't be treated operatively. And not the open ones, because I would treat them operatively. There are lots of varieties of non-operative treatment, okay, ranging from cast immobilization to functional rehab. So we've not got apples comparing with apples. So why are we debating? The reason we're debating in back in 2004, this meta-analysis came out, and then they looked at the re-rupture rates, and the big difference was four times re-rupture rate in the non-operative arm. But those were cast immobilizations. They weren't functional rehabs. This is our uh, protocol in our own institute in Leicester, and essentially this is a pre-made boot, if you like, and you put your Achilles tendon rupture patient into it, and it locks it at 30 degree equinus. Okay, at two weeks, you change, change of liner, keep the 30 degree equinus. At four weeks, change the liner again, you dynamize from 30 to 15. Then at six, uh, six weeks, you go from 30 to not. At eight weeks, they come out of the boot, and then the physio looks after them. Okay, this is the data, about 118 patients uh, assessed, and there are two re-ruptures at 12 months, all right, one due to a compliance issue and three VTEs. So what does the current literature say? It says that at two years, there's no difference in the outcome measures, including your re-rupture rate that Balwin there was going to tell us that it's much higher in non-operative arm. And more. Look at this. No difference again at one year in the primary endpoint of your acute tendon tendo Achilles rupture score, as well as your re-rupture rate. And more. Okay. So no change in re-rupture rate as long as you can do functional non-operative treatment, functional rehab non-operative treatment, rather than traditional above the knee cast and you put them non-weight bearing for forever. Okay, what would I have for my TA rupture? Have a guess. I will have this. And why would I have this? Because it's a no-brainer. And because I want to avoid this. Balwinder might like that, but I don't. Thank you very much. Over to you, Dr. Rana. Get your gloves on. Thank you, Dr. Tender, for that nice talk. And it's actually the AC. Yeah. I'm shivering, that's true, but I had an 
thermometer installed just to check the temperature so that I could prove my point to you that it's the air conditioner. I'm not scared of you. So I would have operated my T if I had a rupture, no doubt about that. Let's see. So what are the current thoughts? A lot of research has gone into etiology, but the method of treatment for acute ruptures is still remains controversial. Someone would, op would advocate an operative repair like me and somebody like Jitendra would treat his own tendo Achilles in a functional brace. Why is that so? But let's be clear first that we are talking about acute ruptures as Dr. Jitendra has already pointed out within the first week the debate is between the operative versus non-operative. The problem is that, as he said, are we comparing apples to apples or are we comparing apples to oranges? So there are a lot of things in literature about the protocols of non-operative management and the ways of operative repair that make comparative reviews very difficult to interpret at times. It's a controversial topic. There's a lack of universally defined accepted outcome measures and there are multitude of different operative techniques, reparative techniques and there a diverse range of post-operative and non-operative protocols. Now we all know about the operative techniques, end-to-end -end repairs, bunnels, castlers and interlocking suture techniques and some people will do a facial turn down, plantar stent and augmentation and then the percutaneous techniques again. Uh, we are aware of the different techniques of option that makes the comparison all the more difficult between operative and non-operative groups. Let's see the, what the literature says. We'll trace it right back from 1987 to the current scenario of 2014. Vashkin, that was long back in 87. 42 patients underwent operative primary repair using various techniques. And it shows that the results were much better in, on all the patients. The re-rupture rates, there was no re-ruptures, as he said. Dr. Jitendra says that the re-rupture rate is same, but there is a plenty of data in literature which proves that operative patients have very low re-rupture rates, and only about 7% minor wound complications. Now every patient, you saw a very fascinating slide of, of, of a very bad wound after a re-rupture. How, how many patients would have that? If you are a very good technically sound surgeon, you'll probably not have that complication. I believe that all of us are good surgeons. So it's operative technique also which matters. Now Gerdes in 1992, he showed that facial turn down if it is done with an acute repair leads to a 35% increase in plantar flexion strength as compared to the conservative treatment. Let's go to 1993, study, a very good study, 111 randomized patients, non-randomized 111 patients, comparative group of uh, operative versus non-operative, high re-rupture rate in the non-operative group and return to work in the operative group was two weeks earlier than, than the non-operative group, despite, obviously, a slightly longer hospitalization rate. Return, return to sports at the pre-injury level in the operative group was 57% compared to the non-operative group. So a lot of patients who, who have a non-operative treatment will not be able to go to the pre-injury level of activity, specifically if it is a sporting activity. Again, the same study. This was a review of literature of 4,083 Achilles tendon ruptures treated operatively and non-operatively and re-rupture rate again, whatever you might say, is there are studies which prove that re-rupture rate in the operative group is much lower than the non-operative group. Complications rate in this specific study, believe me, was less in the operative group as compared to the non-operative group. And there are other things. Return to sports again, we proved that with the operative group and plantar flexion strength is much more in the operative group again. The operatively treated patients, it was concluded, have a significantly higher rate of resuming sporting activities at the same level than a lesser degree of cough atrophy and a better ankle movement and fewer com complaints at one year compared to the non-operative group. The conclusion of this study was operative treatment of ruptured tendoclase is a preferable option of treatment. There are n number of studies in the literature. Again, I've quoted four of these. If you compare, the strength achieved by the operative group on the left side is much more than the strength of plantar flexion achieved by the non-operative group. And number of re-ruptures, and there are a lot of studies where number of re-ruptures in the operative group is much less compared to the uh, non-operative group again. 1995, Meyerson, 29 patients treated with uh, acute ruptures of TA treated operatively. Now there was a different protocol. He used an aggressive physiotherapy protocol, but the, but the results were no re-ruptures, 
three minor complications, return to pre-injury levels for all patients at mean four months, and all patients return to full strength and range of motion at 12 months. We are not sure how many of these were treated, if, if they were treated non-operatively, would return to the same level of sporting activities. 2002, based on a full review of literature, Schepsis made the following recommendations. Achievement of tendon restoration, length restoration, is far more predictable with open operative techniques. And they advocate repair with, with these techniques. Currently, this is the latest, 2014, there has been a randomized, there has been a meta-analysis of the last 10 years of all the studies which were in literature, comparative studies of operative versus non-operative acute tear ruptures. And let's see what they have concluded. This is the latest. Operative treatment has lower re-rupture rates, but obviously a slightly high complication rate. Again, it has a lower re-rupture rate, whatever the other meta-analysis Dr. Jitender has said proves, but I, there are studies which say still the re-rupture rate in the, in the non-operative group is high. Functionally, operatively, there's significantly higher scores on the hop test, germ test, heel rise test, and endurance test. So all of these patients who are treated operatively probably have higher functional results than the non-operative group. Patient satisfaction and pain was noted to be better in the non-operative group initially, but these, all of these studies in the last 10 years which have compared have say the surgical group at one year has better results. So now, what is the conclusion, Dr. Jitender? What would you do? Now we have three scenarios here. Why don't you come up to the stage and let's, let's discuss this again more at length, maybe. Let's have the audience. Yes, sure. So let's, let's have the audience poll on this one. So you got a 27-year-old guy who's a Premier League footballer, or uh, you can say in Indian terms probably what is a high-performance athlete? Who's a high-performance athlete? Let's, let's assume there's some. So ruptures Achilles, uh, Achilles tendon, acute. How many of you are going to fix it? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, okay, I, I will try and explain. So the reason I will fix them is because of exactly what Balwinder has said in his uh, talk, is that you want somebody to return to sports very quickly, quicker than non-operative. You want someone who has to have the same plantar flexion strength, otherwise their career. So I'm not gonna be selfish in giving them a boot. I'm gonna be treating them with an operation, okay? But that, we're talking about a select group, only, only a select group. So we don't count somebody who plays, you know, a five-a-side football uh, once a week kind of thing. We're talking about somebody who's a professional footballer whose work, whose life is football, okay? And he will get uh, an operation for me. And he'll probably get a mini open rather than a full open, okay? So we'll talk about the mini open and Aquilon this afternoon, I think. Uh, here's your second case scenario. A 42-year-old weekend warrior, so just goes, plays the odd game of tennis just on, on, on the, over the weekend. So who's going to do them non-operatively? Let's not give them the option of surgery. So, one, two, yeah. three. So, Hang on. So, okay, this, this no. is the one where, obviously, I would definitely not do the operation on, okay? Because they don't need the same kind of sporting uh, ability as the other person does, and the complication rates are higher. Whatever you say, there is a common theme that the complication rates are much higher with, with surgery. So pick what you want to pick, but essentially the take home message here is you've got to be honest with your patient and tell them that if they are going to have an operation, the complication rate is much higher than they would without an operation. But if you are going to do a non-operative treatment, stick with a functional non-operative treatment rather than a traditional non-operative treatment. I think these are two big take-homes really from this is stick with non-operative if, you, if you're comfortable with it, but do a specific protocol and do them functional rehab. Okay, so yeah. now you So there is a third case scenario. It's a 65 year old retired Postman is, a, is probably a no-brainer. I would even do a conservative treatment in this patient. 
but I would disagree with Dr. Jitendra again in case two scenario where he says he will be doing a non-operative treatment, I would operate 42 years is still young. He's a weekend warrior, he still is involved in sporting activities. So probably this is still a gray area where we would agree to disagree. Uh, case one is again a no-brainer. A high demand athletic patient, yes, operative treatment. Case three is a no-brainer, conservative treatment, yes. Case two, I would say it's still a gray area. Well, again, you know, there's no, uh, this is not all black and white, you know, you can read the literature the way you want to read it. And that is exactly what, what, what we wanted to present. So we've compared our notes beforehand so that we wanted to give you a flavor of if you want to defend your non-operative argument, you look at my presentation. Yeah, if you want to defend your operative argument, you look at this presentation. Both will have, you know, equal uh, uh, you know, chance in the court, court of law. But the key here is you make your mind up based on what's available out there for, for literature and do what's best in your hands, okay? Um, and yes, there are circumstances that operation is needed. There are circumstances that you will definitely get away without the operation. I hope we made the point clear, yeah? yeah. So thanks a lot. Then the summary is operative treatment for the young athletic high demand patient and probably close treatment for a low demand patient. Thank you. So we call Dr. Sampath for his next talk on chronic atlas rupture.